Realize that, uh, especially on the East Coast, or if you're in an area where you know you're going to wrestle a team that focuses on the grand beat, uh, your team in the top position has got to have a, they got to have a game plan. They got to know how to react. So um, this is a series that I kind of picked up from Coach Dresser, and I've modified over the years. And it's something that we'll do. You know, I'll make sure my guys know it. And it's something that's a little routine that we go through a day before we wrestle in a tournament, where there might be grand beat uh, teams or. Uh, team that the day before, maybe we wrestle a duel against a Grammy team. And uh, this, we have a lot of success shutting down Grammys with this series. We get a lot of pins. Um, I mean, realistically, or typically, the only kids on our team that get hit on Grammys anymore are just mismatched. They're brand new wrestlers, wrestling experienced kid from a Grammy team, something like that. Um, our guys are pretty effective at shutting it down. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Uh, across the board. Um, starting off, starting off, I just want to talk about some philosophies. Okay, um, off the whistle. Let's have you go down, Rand. I'm going to show you some some things that we do off the whistle that kind of feed into uh, what we do in the top position. And you might want to tweak this a little bit, but I think it's very important if you know you're going to wrestle a Granby wrestler or a team that that works the Granby. Um, you have to give your team, your wrestlers, a game plan on the whistle. Okay, if they start off with a with nothing in their head, no game plan, and this guy, uh, they you know they spend countless hours working the Grammy system from the bottom position. He's going to know what he wants to do. Okay, so he's going to be going. He's going to beat you to the punch. He's going to catch you with something. So make sure you know whatever you use. Make sure your team knows that that's what they're looking for on the whistle, and they're going to beat the guy to the punch. So. One of the easiest ways, uh, if you know you're going to wrestle a Grammy team, um, is just switch sides on the whistle. So a drill that we'll, we'll kind of do is just uh, switching sides on the chop or switching sides uh, or going to an ankle. All right, so on the whistle, you know, if, we want, if, if, I'm a, if, if I like to chop guys, catch cross wrists, near wrists, stuff like that off the whistle, um, I'm not going to do a same side chop. All right, if I like to chop and catch this wrist, and I'm wrestling a Grammy guy, and I chop. He's going to go with that thing. Boom! He's going to come out, and I'm going to lose him. He might get my wrist, and he might reverse me, whatever. So, if I'm a chop guy, I'm going to switch sides. Number one, let's go back a little bit, man. And I don't want to do a chop where I'm going to my side. Um, I think there's a time to chop all the way to your side to catch a wrist, uh, and I think there's a time to keep that knee up the rear end. Um, and this is the time to keep the deer at the rear end because. Number one, you're going to beat them off the whistle. You're going to jump sides. That's going to confuse them. Okay. And number two, if the if your knee is up the rear, then now you're going to be over that ankle. And it's going to be hard for him to, to hit a grand roll. All right. So on the whistle, you know, we just work drills right here where we're starting. Boom. Chopping here. Turn this way. Right. Knee up the rear end. You know, we're looking to gather wrists. Boom here. Forward pressure, driving them down. Okay. We have a lot of success to jump jump across chop. Jump across chop off the whistle. If we're going to an ankle, you know, we don't go to this one, we come inside, switching sides on, switching sides. Uh, another good start uh, is right into a spiral ride. And you'll see how later on in the series, how we kind of work the half. All right, we're going to ride off the whistle, especially if it's short time. And you know this, and you're winning the match, it's close, and you know this guy's going to be going nuts on the whistle to try to score that point and tie it up or take the lead. Um, I would go straight to a half, spiral half. All right, go on the whistle, boom. Just right here, right here, getting that half in. He's going to be probably making it hard to get that thing in there, but you know, just digging and digging, then get, getting relentless with it. Um, another option, if you're, uh, if you like to teach your team to, uh, I guess I've heard it called the bulldog, or basically ride an ankle, that might be something you do. I don't do a whole lot of that, but uh, you know, that might be something right off the whistle. Obviously, if you got this guy's ankle, it's hard for him to uh, grab me roll you. So. The biggest thing, a couple tricks there, jumping sides, shoving halves in, but the biggest thing is you need to make sure that they have a game plan. When the whistle is blown, your wrestler knows exactly what he's going to do. So he can stop that initial move. Okay, he takes charge right away. Um, <clears throat> kind of another philosophy, and this is something that I typically just point out whenever we're teaching takedowns, uh, reversals, stuff like that is, let's say it's from a front headlock, you go behind the guy. All right, 
anytime you're taking a guy down, coming behind him, you're never coming here around the waist. Okay? Guys can grab that and they can they can tuck in here. You have to hit a Granby, or they can, you know, if it's maybe a big guy, they can side roll you, grab it, boom, right here. So we're always talking about when we're coming around the corner, where we get behind the guys, we're always either grabbing, we're either grabbing here, here, all right, never giving them this. Never giving them this. Never just, you know, get get behind the guy, boom, and coming like this. Because he's trained at a Granby system. Oh, man, he's just going to see a green light. He's going to start going. Um, so just some things to think about. And like I said, that's something that we point out just whenever we're teaching takedowns in those situations. You know, just shorthand, never giving, never coming all the way around the waist. Um, now I'm going to go into uh, basically a series that we do. And what we'll do is we'll teach this, make sure the guys know what to do, and then once they get it down, which it usually takes about one practice for them to understand what they're doing, then this is something, you know, in a light practice day before a match, this is part of our routine. We'll just click through this. We'll just click through this, okay? What we're going to start with is what we call float drill.